and it's just one of those things where I think uh, reproductive sovereignty can allow, I imagine, men and women to understand, and anyone in between, to figure out like what, uh, yeah, how to do this without. Because uh, let me ask you this first: people are like, "Well, what's the big deal? We have the pill." Mm-hmm. What is wrong with the pill, in your view? Well, um, like. I'm pro-choice. I think people should take it if they want to, but I think that there needs to be free prior and informed consent. So free as in people know that they have other options Mm -hmm. and then prior and informed as in like the doctor takes the time to teach you about all of the side effects and you have the time to decide within yourself, like what you're willing to put up with and where your boundaries are. And like, okay, if I ever get that side effect, I'm going to stop taking it. Um, because I don't have to take it like Mm -hmm. there I think it kind of there's a common perception that the options are like be on the pill or be pregnant (laughs) and that's just super super untrue because like female bodies are only fertile like about six days a month Mm mm-hmm um so and it's completely possible to identify those days like scientifically and objectively and very clearly um so my issue with the pill is a that we just give it to 15 year olds before telling them any of that stuff before teaching them how their bodies work teaching them how to identify when they're fertile, teaching them why their fertility is important. Like fertility is important um, as a measure of health and as an aspect of health, not just, it's not only important when you're trying to make a baby or trying to not make a baby. It's like an important part of a whole healthy human. It's like, it's a really magical part. Like that's the part of our bodies and our human experience that it's like literally magic like we can bring beings Mm -hmm. from the other side of the veil to this side of the veil Mm -hmm. through our own acts of like fun and love and pleasure and cooperation and like cooperating with each other cooperating within our communities cooperating with our plant and animal communities that like feed us and make us healthy like it's such a beautiful dance like it's so worthy of reverence and protection even if you're not trying to have a baby it's still this part of you that is just like a magical portal (laughs) and that Mm -hmm. um yeah so the pill has a lot of potential side effects there are some extremely serious side effects like Um, one book that I read said that in the U S three women a day die because of birth control side effects, but like, while the super, super fatal, like life threatening side effects are extremely uncommon, the quality of life threatening side effects are extremely, extremely common. And most people who take the pill will experience mood changes and loss of libido. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really sad for teenagers to be put on the pill um, before they even have an opportunity to discover their own bodies and their own pleasures and their own likes and dislikes and like your libido. It's not just your sex drive, it's your life drive. It's like your creative drive and your like movement towards what you want Mm -hmm. Um, yeah I think it's really sad to dampen that in people and for a lot of people don't realize a lot of people don't connect the dots between the way that they're feeling and the medication that they're taking um but like the number of friends that I had who like never had an orgasm in their life because they were on the pill before they started having sex And then they go off the pill when they're like 23 and have their first orgasm. It's like really sad. 
It's really, really sad, especially when you consider that, like, the pressure to go on the pill has a lot to do with, like, male partners being reluctant to wear condoms Mm -hmm. because that would dull their pleasure. Mm -hmm. But then being on the pill dulls my pleasure. And so you're like, you're taking this drug, putting your own health at risk, like increasing your chances of cancer, increasing your chance, like several different types of cancer. It's actually a class one carcinogen. Um, wow. It's, it like, it makes you vulnerable to all sorts of side effects, like pH level stuff, mood disruption stuff, um, like serotonin stress level, like, it's your, it's related to your whole entire body because ovulation is like triggered by hormones in your brain. So Mm -hmm. if you're, if you're taking artificial hormones, like, which don't do any of the same things that your body's hormones do, Mm -hmm. um, you're shutting down the communication between like your hypothalamus, your pituitary and your ovaries and that changes your personality it changes your ability to cope with stress it changes it actually like dampens your immediate stress response there's a book called this is your brain on birth control and it's talking about how um people on birth control don't get that uh like acute cortisol spike in response to a stressful event so Mm. um yeah, that basically makes me think like, you know, we need that. Like when something's wrong and we feel like something's wrong, we get up and do something about it and fix the situation. Yeah. So when I think about like a ton of young women on this medication in a society that is like completely f- like fraught when it comes to like sex and relationships and all this and the fact that these women don't have that natural alarm system in their bodies, like mm, yeah. telling them to get out of these situations, that makes me really concerned for them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like when I, when I was 17, I got put on antidepressants and the pill at the same time. And I just was having these crazy side effects and like calling my doctor every week and being like, now I'm feeling this. They would be like, okay, one more week. We'll see how it goes. And I was like, now I'm feeling this. Okay. One more week. And then I ended up attempting suicide. And then I, that's when I swore off, like, okay, I'm not taking anything that can possibly fuck with my mood because that was crazy. Mm -hmm. So I've been pretty sworn off it for a really long time, but then I've basically just watched each of my friends reach their breaking point where their birth control is like causing them so much harm and they can't do it anymore and they stop and they have to figure out some other way at which point I'm always sitting there being like ha 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 you want to learn about (laughs) fertility awareness it's the best thing ever I love it so much (laughs) it's really fun to understand your body come with me um yeah and I think that I just think that anyone who's taking the pill like might have good reason for doing so but they should know that fertility awareness is an option and that um they can have boundaries around it yeah yeah it seems like the downsides of taking the pill and there's also other forms of what is the one it's what is the one that they there's one that 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 it's like a i'm sorry i'm so ignorant about the iud thank you and that where is that where is that placed like that's actually inserted in the body right inside the uterus yeah oh my god so like seems bad i basically Hormonal contraceptives are hormonal contraceptives. Like they all work the same way. And there's kind of this mythology that a lot of doctors perpetuate that the IUD is somehow less invasive because it's like localized. It's admin, you're rather than ingesting the artificial hormones, you're just like steeping your uterus in the artificial hormones. But like we all have a uh, circulatory system so obviously nothing it doesn't just sit in there that's really weird um take from the doctors okay yeah and it's like (laughs) the iud basically comes with all of the baggage that artificial hormones come with and then also comes with the baggage of a foreign object inside your uterus that you need a doctor to help you deal with when you want it in or out 
Mm -hmm. uh, which can be a huge issue. Like, especially Planned Parenthood has gotten called out for this a few times. And it's an extremely common experience of basically like the doctor decides Mm -hmm. who gets to be in control of their own fertility and who doesn't and will very easily refuse people um, who are asking to have their IUDs taken out. Like I've heard stories of people having to go to like five different doctors um, before somebody agreed to take their IUD out and people having all these obstacles thrown up in their path. Like I was corresponding with somebody who was having a hard time getting their IUD taken out. Like they're, and they were told, um, well, if you want it taken out and a new one put in, we can fit you in next week. But if you just want it out, that'll be a few months. Mm. Uh, well, I obviously just want it out. And I've had to give people advice like, well, go in, like bring bring your partner with you or a friend posing as your partner and say, we're trying to have a baby, then they'll take it out. And I've given people that advice and it works. That's how they get it, take it out, which is fucked. <laughs> like, Ugh. yeah. And and they're not even like, they, I honestly, like, I don't know that many people. I'm not like super social, but I know like <laughs> of six pregnancies with an IUD in. Like really? they're definitely cooking the numbers on like the 99.9% effectiveness rating. And yeah. like, yeah, there's just kind of, Jeez. there's a systemic there's a systemic will to have these things in people's bodies, uh, whether or not mm-hmm. the individual person involved really thinks that's the best thing for them or not. That's wild. Yeah, it's extremely fucked. It's extremely fucked. And like, it's, it only gets all the more fucked when you look at um, like indigenous and racialized communities and how much agency they're afforded in their fertility right yeah i was um, thinking iud's are used super coercively yeah. and not essentially like it recently came out about um the child services in in bc inserting iud's in 10 year old indigenous kids like at like indigenous kids that come through the system if they're of a certain age just got um Fuck. iud's inserted which is like so traumatic they're extremely like most people have extreme pain with the insertion and removal of the IUDs and yeah like that that trauma isn't really acknowledged or held or accommodated like in my mind like if I loved someone who was going to get an IUD it would be like okay let me take you there let me hold your hand let's advocate for you actually being administered a painkiller before this happens like let's let's go home and cuddle and eat soup after but we're like there's no space held for it it just happens to people and then they're just kind of like shaking and just like oh well I guess that's normal Mm. that makes me really sad (laughs) <laughs> yeah. especially with these young people that this is like one of their formative experiences with their reproductive system and their bodies 